So uh, I'm, I'm very pleased and grateful to have been asked to give this speech today um, because Ilium Doan is somebody who has certainly inspired me and uh, I believe it is important that we, we make this commemoration. 20 years ago, the first time I had the opportunity to address this commemoration in English, I delivered an impassioned, rhetoric-rich speech in which I attacked government for being blinded by fool's gold. This was something I felt very strongly, and I had good reason to believe it at the time. I had had the opportunity to witness first time hand some of the less savoury aspects of the poorly regulated Isle of Man finance industry of the 1980s, and what I saw angered me. I am told that with age comes wisdom, and perhaps looking back at my angry young man's speech of 20 years ago, I could have qualified some of my rhetorical flourishes and brought balance to more, the more radical prose. I could indeed have given a less colourful and more measured address, but such moderate words and mainstream language would have been unlikely to stir the hearts of those assembled. We should remember, however, the words of our great Manx hero, Ilium Doan, whose actions we are here to commemorate. In his final words prior to his execution, Ilium Doan chose not to attack or undermine the blatantly corrupt establishment and process which led to his untimely and tragic demise. He sought instead to make clear his reasoning for surrendering our nation to the parliamentarian forces which were threatening our very existence. In the 1776 broadside which purported to represent Ilium Doan's final words, he said, From my soul I wish all animosity may, after my death, be quite laid aside and my death by none be called in question. He also stated how unjust the accusation is that the then rising of the people in which afterwards I came to be engaged did not at all or in the least degree intend the prejudice or ruin of that family by which he was, he was referring to the Stanleys, Lords of Man. Explaining his actions, he said, you now see me here a sacrifice ready to be offered up for that which was the preservation of your lives and fortunes, which were then in hazard, but that I stood between you and your utter ruin. With these words, clarify, sorry, while these words clarify Ilium Doan's intentions with regard to protecting the ancient rights, privileges and indeed lives of the Manx people, it is also clear that he would not have been in a position to uniquely and fundamentally protect the foundations of our nation had he not been actively engaged in the work of the government of the Isle of Man. I would strongly argue that if you wish to significantly influence the direction in which our nation is headed, you should follow the lead of our great Manx hero, Ilium Doan, and actively engage with the political system which endeavours to represent you. In less than nine months' time, the people of our island will choose a new House of Keys. So if you want to change, stirring rhetorical speeches will not be enough. You should either stand as a candidate or actively support candidates who wish to bring about the change you are seeking. So where are we two decades after I first addressed this commemoration? 20 years ago, or 20 years on, sorry, we have one of the most tightly regulated finance sectors in the world, as anyone trying to open up a bank account in the Isle of Man will attest. Of course, there remains some philosophical criticism of the very route on which our finance sector relies. And attractive, if not overly simplistic, arguments can be created which support this criticism. However, the root of the sector which lies at the heart of our economy 
has developed as an essential part of the capitalist system which governs global finance. In a fairer world, the criticisms directed at us would first be directed at the large countries and international institutions which have allowed the current global financial crisis to develop. But as all playground bullies know, it's safer to pick a fight with the small guys. As the Isle of Man and indeed other small well-regulated finance centres are discovering, facts and fairness are rarely allowed to interfere with the intentions and economic competitiveness of our larger neighbours. As Ilium Dawn found to his cost, and the Isle of Man government is seeing increasingly often, might is right. And once again, our nation has to try to reinvent itself, second-guessing the meaning of international standards and rules, which seem to be interpreted by our larger neighbours in ways wholly designed to suit their own self-serving economic interest. Our closest neighbours have shown that when the chips are down, we cannot rely on their support. Indeed, it could be reasonably argued that the UK has demonstrated clear ambivalence, if not outright hostility, to our nation, being much more foe than friend in recent times. Now, cutting our ties immediately with our largest trading partner would, of course, be politically naive and economic madness. But the time has certainly come for the Isle of Man to develop new international relationships and refresh and strengthen old political acquaintances. I have never hidden my belief that the Isle of Man will ultimately be better off when it is dependent on no one. And the UK has been doing its best to wean us off any remaining economic advantage our current constitutional relationship provides. The time is coming when constitutional independence for our nation will become a realistic and economically viable prospect. If that independence is to become a reality, we need more people to show the commitment shown by Ilium Doan to engage with the system and be in the right place to make the important decisions which will need to be taken. Criticising from the sidelines is easy, but ultimately unrewarding. Had Ilium Doan confined himself to this, we would have been absorbed into the United Kingdom and we would not be here today to commemorate his life and tragic death. There is a time and place for measured and balanced speeches, and Hango Hill on the 2nd of January is not it. We have enough politicians in Tinwald who have chosen to make careers out of criticising decision makers from the safety and comfort of the political fence. What we need is people with the clarity of purpose and self-sacrificing commitment of Ilium Doan. We need politicians with the vision and drive to develop a future for our nation which may involve constitutional independence for our island. A sovereign Manx state could join alliances of other small countries. The Nordic countries which populate the European economic area may well provide valuable allies. <coughs> Such vision must of course be tempered by economic and political realism. But if we are continually pushed further and further away by the UK, we may well see the day when our economic, social and cultural interests are better suited by new constitutional relationships and international alliances. Ilium Doan's actions ensured the survival of our small nation and allowed us to be in the position we are today to consider its future. When the large countries of the world are hurting, it is a challenging time to be a small nation. Your actions in the next 12 months can help ensure that we have in place the right political leadership to protect and grow the legacy of Ilium Dawn. Go to my boy. 
Thanks for watching. Please help support Modern Manx history and keep this channel going.